Can you move to the second slide, please? Yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cloud Lunch and Learn sessions. My name is Hugo Barona, and today we have Victor with us talking about IoT. So I hand over to you, Victor. Uh, thank you, Hugo. So, hello, everybody. I hope you're having an amazing beginning of the week. So, as I will go into this me, my name is Victor Rodriguez, and I'm Azure Cloud Specialist for Data Modernization, IoT, Machine Learning, and AI at Storm Technology. Uh, I'm really new on the amazing world of IoT. Uh, from the last three years, I've been working on a couple of projects related to vehicle onboard device uh, for fleet management and smart offices. Uh, so feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter. So let's begin. Uh, so let's cover the agenda for today's presentation. I would like to cover an introduction of Azure IoT Edge and how you can utilize them to build a resilient IoT solutions. And you look into the NVIDIA Jetson developer kit that allows you to create AI workloads that you can run uh, on small factor GPU produced by NVIDIA. And then uh, take a look on NVIDIA DeepStream SDK uh, and then we can go ahead and deploy the Azure Custom Vision AI model using Azure IoT Edge running on the NVIDIA Jetson Anu. And finally, we can conclude with a slide with additional resources on how to get started with NVIDIA Jetson Nano Developer Kit and Azure IoT Edge and Hub. Uh, let's talk about the Azure IoT Edge. Uh, it's essentially a runtime that can be deployed to microcomputer that allows you to deploy your IoT workloads in a containerized models. This model, uh, there's first class support for device SDKs like Python, Node.js, Java, and C, and, and allows you to produce, you, uh, produce telemetry using AMQP and MQTT for data transport that allows you to fast time for trans, uh, transmission from the device to the cloud. Uh, you can operate in an offline or intermittent network conditions, meaning that if you have one of, uh, one of these uh, models deployed, let's say uh, a cheap container that loses connectivity uh, at the sea, uh, whenever this connectivity comes back to you, you can send back the cache element to the cloud. So the runtime support Linux on the x64 environment, as well as uh, ARM32 slash uh, 64 in addition to Windows X64. Uh, the entire application is open source and it's available on GitHub. Uh, bring along with the two system models, uh, as known well as Edge Agent, which is responsible for deployment and pulling down the containers orchestration, getting the specification from the cloud on what container should run these models. Uh, and as well, the Edge Hub, which allows you to perform the communication from, uh, from and through the device to the cloud for intermodal communication, as you, you see in the demo today. Okay. Uh, many popular Azure services can be deployed to Azure IoT Edge models. For example, if you li would like to perform a stream analytics in real time to maybe aggregate your data over a specific time window, you can create that service on Azure and export it down and import it to IoT Edge device. And for a similar of the serverless option on Azure, known as Azure Functions, then it allows you to create a very easy micro, uh, very easy microservice that can pull can be pulled down uh, to the IoT device and get as run as model. So you have it like these two options today: uh, get this uh, Azure Edge models, for example, this Analytics and an Azure function, and insert inside of the device. Okay. Uh, it's important to know that and going over uh, what we talk about today. Uh, let me just, uh, sorry, let's go from here. So, uh, so if you want to enter in more advanced IoT stuff, uh, IoT Edge should have support to AI and machine learning. Uh, this comes from the popular cognitive services like test analytics, uh, face detection, and some computer vision services like pull tests out of the image and they also can create a custom vision models. That can be trained like to detect uh, anything that you like, for example, soda cans that can fall down in a production lines and deploy to IoT model. 
uh, that we are going to see in the demo today. So uh, in more advanced scenarios, you can use the same IoT Edge model to support machine learning projects that, could, again, you can bundle down and put inside of the IoT model. So it's important to know then going over and we talk about so far, you, if you are interested in build an intelligent video application, you can do that. As we discussed, there are certain things that we can be handled by cognitive service, and got things, uh, we got this on the IoT model one time. Uh, that's back and secured by Azure IoT Hub that allow us a high performance, a high throughput message. So we get great ability to go ahead and get started with that. But unfortunately, and the problem is, if you, if you don't have some kind of acceleration layer, it, you're not going to see a good performance of this type of things, especially when you talk about uh, a custom vision models or AI models, uh, in a, especially if you deploy this kind of models on the edge uh, on a CPU, uh, in a CPU model device. So, and for this, that's NVIDIA Jets Online become a really interested for this kind of workload. Uh, this is a small form factor ARM-based microcomputer that come equipped with an uh, onboard GPU. That's a low to acceleration for AI and machine learning and coming from different levels. We are going to talk about today is just the entry level, the Jetson Nano. The Jetson Nano that costs around $99 and that gives you a 138 CUDA capable core on a device that's not much larger than a cell phone. As you can see here, the specs in the device is really impressive, given the low price point. Uh, have like a 64 uh, quad core ARM uh, 57 running at a 1.43 gigahertz. And, and what is great too, that's, uh, uh, that's this board come with a, a four gigabytes, 64 bit memory. Uh, what's um, really amazing also, it's in the interface available. Uh, they have like a CSI connector uh, to connect cameras that you're going to, if you want to do some like video processing, as well a gigabit Ethernet porting among with other things. Uh, it's, a, it's a very good way to get started for a very low price point. And, and this brings us to the next point. If you're building out a detector and you are going to deploy to your Jetson and device, the deep stream SDK that's available on the device. Uh, this allows you to very easily create uh, a pipeline, sending up videos inputs and apply any NVIDIA Tensor RT workload that you might have on the top of that to do things like, let's say, detect objects that might appear on the video screen. Uh, so perhaps you have an existing model using TensorFlow, Cafe2, Keras, PyTorch, as long as you export to one of the compatible models, you are good to go. Uh, for TensorRT, that includes is the TF, TRT, UFF, uh, the Onyx, and the CAF model format. So if you export your model to one of these formats, you're good to go using it with the Jetson Nano. Uh, this like you'll be like you'll be uh, immediately available to run inside the GPS3 applications to perform detections on any video inputs of, of the device. Uh, but when, when you look at this long with the previous slide, you can see that you can perform object detection of the eight simultaneous video streams on just in the entry level device. So imagine it, this is like a small device, smaller than a cell phone. You can do eight simultaneous video streams on just this device. Uh, so you're going to see a couple, a little bit of this on the demo today. Uh, NVIDIA Jetson Pack SDK included the OS image uh, libraries, APIs, samples, uh, developer tools, and documentation. Uh, as long with the configured Linux kernel and NVIDIA drivers, uh, the reference Ubuntu based OS image uh, that come with the prepopulate with Jetpack and provide the following libraries, uh, like for example, CUDA, TensorRT, SDK for high performance deep learning inference, uh, multimedia APR for video encoding, decoding, uh, OpenCV, uh, this is a, like a popular library for computer vision, computer vision, e image processing, machine learning. Uh, uh, there's a vision process interface in the VPI library, uh, like save us like a trouble on having installed these ourselves and get us uh, uh, up and running much faster. So 
I think about when you're building like an AI model or video processing model, machine learning model, you want to, especially if, it, if it's a developing moment, if uh, it's a POC moment, so you want to go faster with this uh, at, at the beginning of this deployment and development. Uh, and maybe you like you are wondering uh, how IoT Edge uh, run all this workload as container and how we can get the GPU support into a container. Uh, and the way that occurs is underneath the hood, NVIDIA developed is something called NVIDIA Docker. That's a special form of Docker container runtime that you may be familiar with, except that is at a special access step to the runtime. Uh, what's happening is that mounts the CUDA drivers needed by the GPU as well with the uh, host hardware variable to container. So, this happened here in this layer. So make it the interface between the Docker engine, the CUDA driver, and the NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, and by doing this, eventually allows you to leverage the GPU capabilities inside of the container. So that's, that's, that's the reason that's so powerful and you can use in the Docker engine inside of the NVIDIA. So uh, for the demo today, uh, as you use a case of a soda can manufacturer, who wants to improve the efficiency of this plant by detecting soda cans that fell down in the production line. We are simulating cameras to monitor each of the lines, collect the image, train a custom eye model with a custom vision, which has no code computer vision uh, AI model builder, to detect the cans that are up or down, and then deploy this custom vision AI model to the deep stream. So let's get started with the, the configuration. Uh, let me switch the screens here, just a second. Okay. okay, so before we check the custom vision, the modem, the AI model, the interest part, let's double check first the Azure IoT Hub. Here in my Azure portal, I will navigate through my resource growth, open the IoT Hub. Here in Automatic Device Management, I have IoT Edge. Yeah, so as you can see in here, I just have one device, a uh, Raspberry Pi from another presentation. So now I'm gonna create a new device here. Uh, to create this, I just need to click here, add an IoT Edge device. Uh, for the device ID, I'll set for the name Jetson Nano 001. And here I will leave everything uh, by default using semantic key. Uh, since this is just a develop environment, I will. It's okay. Go for the semantic key, and you are going to use the manual provision here anyway. But I'll talk about this later. And I leave everything by default, and just click save. And let's wait. To the, oh, okay, it's done. So let's open the device. Peter, so, just one thing. Uh, can you just do a little bit of zoom on in the browser? Yes, so, sure. sure. Let's yeah. make come back here. Okay. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Just come back here. So we just created the Jetson Nano with the name Jetson Nano 001. We set the uh, everything by default using the same app key. We're going to use this later. So I will open here the Jetson Nano, my device. Uh, and as you can see here, we just, let me scroll down. Uh, yeah, so we have here uh, two devices, the Edge Agent, okay, and the Edge Hub. After we deploy the, our uh, like AI uh, NVIDIA GP stream model, the model should appear here. So here, the list of the models should display all models that we deploy on the IoT Edge device, okay? So let's jump to the custom vision. I have it here open, my custom vision, customvision.ai. Uh, this is part of Microsoft. Let me just show this inside of my resource group. So here I have my custom vision create, my workload create here, and this is the page. Okay, so he, uh, in here I have my project called SodaCans. And this project have all the image of my SodaCans tagged as up or down. So let's double check the images that are up. As you can see, I already tagged my images. Let me open one image. So you can see, is you can easily tag. I will untag this image, close here. Let me just up. Come back to tag images. Up. 
And you can see that's the custom vision interface is really good because I already found the, found the image that I want. So I click here, set the tag to up. That's it. Let's check now the images that are down. So you can see here. So now this process here is manually, guys. So you need to come to train this custom vision. You are you you are labeling and tagging the image manually. So here, just to, to illustrate, I have one image here with the soda can down. Okay. So after we tag the image, it's really simple. We just need to come here, click train. You're gonna use the quick training, clicking train, and this will take like a few seconds. Uh, let me show here a little bit of this other interaction that I trained before. Uh, so here we have three three things. So we have precision, recall, and math. Okay. So precision is where we show if a tag is predicted by our model is how is likely that to be right. So you, you, this is just a developing. So it's seventy six percent precision this model. Okay. And here we have recall. The recall where is the number will tell you all uh, tell you out of the tags which should be the predicted correctly, and what is the percentage that your model correctly find. So it's sixty six percent. It's not too bad. It's just a small data set, so that's the reason. And we have the math. That is the mean average precision. This number will uh, you tell you the overall object detector performs across all tags. Okay, uh, let's see if this train is still running. Let's wait a little bit. Okay, if you take more long, you can just export in here. Okay, yeah, it's, took, uh, it's taking longer than I expect. So let's just export my last interaction. That's not changed at all. So to export, what you need to do is just click here in the performance, click in export. Uh, if you re regard to the, the models that we mentioned before, so it's possible to use inside of the uh, Jetson on if you can use the Onyx model, you can use the TensorFlow. In this case, I'll use the Onyx. So I'll select Onyx and click here, download. And it's downloaded here, my model. It's a really small model, as you can see. Okay, so we're not gonna use this model right now. So now let's jump back to uh, configure our IoT device, okay? Uh, the first step here, you would need to configure the, uh, the IoT edge on the IoT device. So let me jump back, jump into the, my Jetson Nano server here, my Jetson Nano. So I will look in here. Okay, good. So uh, it's, it's really straightforward the way to configure the IoT Edge on the IoT device. Microsoft provides this step by step that you can configure this like an uh, Ubuntu machine on a version to 18.04 or on a Windows machine. It's really straightforward. So the first step is to hash the Microsoft key and software repository feed, and I'll set some comments here. So I'll not enter too much in details. So it's just a couple of comments. And by the end of the presentation, there's the resources there. If you want to see more details about this, you can check the links. So first one here. I have another comment here. Elevation of the privileges. And here, comment. And okay. Okay, so that's the first step. Now we need to install the IoT Edge security demo on the server. So first thing we need to do is a sudo apt get update. Let's do this, wait a couple of seconds. Okay, it's done. Okay, now the installation. It's really simple. sudo apt get install IoT Edge. Okay, let's wait a little bit. Installing things, installing all dependencies. Processing the triggers. 
Okay, it's done. And now we need to configure the IoT Edge runtime to link with the physical device with the device identity that exists in the Azure IoT Hub. So uh, to do this, we are using, for this case, the manual provision. So what we need to do is first uh, edit the config YAML. Uh, we can do this by sudo nano. And let's get the config YAML here. Okay. Uh, so the yeah. Okay. Uh, let's found here the manual provisioning. Okay, it's here. So come back to the portal. Here, we just come back to the five resource group. I will open the Azure IoT Hub. Let's find out the IoT Edge. Open the Jetson Nano. Okay, I use here the, my primary connection stream. So, you see, this is just a dev environment. There's no problem. Display to you guys this. Uh, okay. And here, just need to um, and paste this here. Okay, so let me just save here. I just set in the provision to manual and the device connection string here. And yes, YAML, and that's it. Okay, so now we just need to restart the system, uh, the, the service IoT Ad. To do this is really simple. System, yeah, uh, restart IoT Edge. Okay, uh, so now we need to check if everything is fine. Let's check the status of the IoT demo. So another command here, system CTL. Uh, status IoT Edge. Okay, yeah, the model agent was created. That's fine. That's very good. Now we need to check the the connection. Uh, the good part here, the this this model of the IoT Edge have come with some built-in configurations. Uh, actually, built-in monitoring for help you. So what we need to do is just sudo IoT Edge check, and this will run a check for network configuration errors. So you got, as you can see, there's some warnings and some errors because you check if it's, the way you are running the IoT Edge is a proper way to run, let's say for a production environment. So let me just give you some details. For example, here, uh, some DNS server errors, the production readiness, and all other kind of things. But the important part here, if the connectivity check, everything is okay. So you can you can say that okay, everything's fine, and my device now is communicating with the Azure. That's the important part. So uh, okay, let's check if you have already any models running on site of device. So for this is Azure a sudo IoT add list. You list all my models. That's good. So it's running the Azure agent. Uh, so. The thing is, where is the IoT Edge Hub? Uh, the Edge Hub will just appear here when you deploy your first model, because this model is one of the responsible for the de model deployment. That's the reason it's just the Edge agent running here. Uh, so, well, my configuration uh, for the IoT device is almost done. Now we just need to copy the custom model that we generate on the custom visual service. And let's say to not lose any time, I will copy this model to OneDrive that I can simply run some comments. So uh, first command, I will open my folder deep stream here. Uh, this is my deep stream folder. Uh, okay, inside of my deep stream folder, I have my custom models. And let's download this first. Uh, okay. And Downloading the my custom vision model. 
Good. Now we just need to extract the mod inside of the folder. Okay, you have the models. Nice. So uh, that's another additional step that you need to do is for the deeper string to understand how to parse the bounding box uh, provided by the model, uh, the custom vision model, because this is just to specific the custom vision, we need to download the next library called YOLO. So let's download this library here. Just to, to, to remember guys, this is just a developer environment. So all the steps, maybe you need to insert this inside of a CI CD pipeline and you need to automate this uh, to be able to, to deploy this inside of the container to not doing this a lot of manual steps that we hear. Okay. I just trying to, to give you like an overview of the high def, what's happening in the background. Okay, now we need to download the raw videos that we're gonna use to simulate the camera. So let me, I will come back to my, uh, my custom strings. Uh, you download the video. It's a bit common, so that's why I'm not typing this one. Okay, downloading. Nice. Okay, so now we just need to extract these videos to the folder. Yeah, so I have three videos here. Okay, so we're almost there. Let's go now to the Visual Studio. Here I have the my Visual Studio. Here I have like my deployment template for this uh, deep screen video. So when you get started with this, with the documentation that is inside of uh, at the resource by the end of the presentation, this like is, uh, is the base for the deployment with the NVIDIA deep string inside of the RE2 device. So there's a couple of configurations here. So the, the way that you communicate, uh, the entry points, for example, the configuration, uh, not the entry mode details, but things that you need to configure inside of the IoT Edge to run the specific the model inside of the IoT Edge. Uh, and if the, the things that we need to change here is the bindings. So I will add here the bindings. Let me just paste here. Okay. Now, so basically, what I'm saying here with this mind is saying to my uh, IoT Edge model to take a look of for these configurations. Let's say here I have my custom configuration, the custom string that my videos that you need to read the videos. And the custom model is the actual the model Onyx that I just download. The way that we go to the visual AI, uh, the custom vision export, you need to put here. So the next step is to deploy or actually deploy the, the IoT model. So let me just check here if everything's fine. Okay, my Jetson is here. That's good. So uh, first, let me create a, a deploy manifest. So what you need to do is after we just change here, close, close, double check, okay, it's fine. Just right click here, generate IoT Edge deployment manifest. Okay, it's generated. So how to deploy this? I uh, here in have uh, here in config I have the deployed manifest. I just need to go here, right click again, and create the deployment for a single device. And here inside of the Visual Studio Code, I already show my device available inside of the IoT Hub. I have selected the Jetson Nano. And okay, deployment system. What's happening right now in, under the hood is IoT Edge is saying, should the Jetson Nano run this model? The Jetson Nano now you just download the information and build this model. So let's leave running here uh, the monitoring for the uh, for messages that my Jetson only send it to the cloud. Uh, this like take a little bit, like uh, expecting some few seconds. Uh, but anyway, uh, until then, let's check the, uh, the list of uh, list of uh, models running. Okay, so I already have my NVIDIA string. The Edge, Edge Hub is here as well. And what we need to do now is to check if my model is running, I will open the VLC 
and I will check if the job is running by connecting to the device using the VOC and getting this network stream. So let's play here. Okay, so it's already running. Uh, if, if you're not seeing the image, just let me know. But what's happening right now is this bounding box and the videos are the Jetson Nano looking at the video and looking for the, the, uh, the cans, if the cans are up or down. This video is looping, that's why, but it's going back and connecting and checking the bounding box, up or down. So let me check the message being sent. Okay, so now we already send the message to the cloud. As you can see here, my Jetson Nano, it's already sending the message and say, okay, he found the object, this is the location of the object in the image, and if it is the image, if the, the can, it's up or down. So, uh, okay, so the VLC, uh, okay, that's important. So now we are visualizing here this video is uh, three real time video streams with the custom AI vision model that we like just building minutes to detect the custom vision elements. Uh, for this example, we are using three simulated cameras again, using three video files. But of course, that you can use a real-time camera to execute the same. Uh, in Visual Studio, here you can see the telemetry being sent to the IoT Hub, and the possibility the possibilities are here are many. So you can, for example, now using the information that you are sending to the IoT Hub, connecting string analytics, uh, connecting uh, logic apps, and you, from there you can build your line of business application. Uh, it's, it's it's really straightforward and easy uh, ramp up. Uh, uh, AI custom vision solution using the, the Jetson Nano and the Jupyter SDK. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. With that, I think I conclude my demo. If you can, we can jump now for the questions. If you have any questions, just just hit me. Yeah, we have here a question, Victor. Uh, so Dorin asks, is it possible to have a container image with Edge pre-installed? Uh, it's possible to have a container image with the Edge pre-install. Uh, no, you need to to insert this in some kind of the, the pipeline of distribution. So what you have here, for example, as I demonstrate here, so when you deploy, uh, when you, you build it like your model, you need to actually, when you go to device provision, so sorry about that. So when you have here the Azure IoT, you have the device provision and service. And using the device provision and service, you can say to device provision and service to deploy this, this uh, edge container inside of the, uh, the, the device. And from there, you start to build the containers to insert inside of the IoG edge. So the process is basically that. So, have the, so you have the device, you build a, a pipeline that the device connect automatically to the cloud. And from there, the automatic device provision distribute the IoG edge uh, container there. Yeah, it's clear, Don. Yeah, uh, okay. apparently we have no more questions here. I actually have one question for you, just to, to yeah. be sure. In in which kind of scenarios people can understand if they need uh, to use a IoT Edge solution or anything else? Uh, I think when you want to avoid any kind of sending too much message, that's the simplest case ever. So let's say, for example, as I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned, for example, you want to send, uh, you are in the ship in the middle of the sea and you have a limited connection with, between your device and the, the, the cloud. So this is the simplest case is you store all the messages inside of the IoT device and you find the connection, you send the telemetry for the cloud. Another case, for example, if you want to avoid send too much telemetry to the, to the cloud, what we need to do is basically uh, you aggregate, for example, using the Azure function to just trigger when you, like, let's say you are in a, a factory and you monitor uh, a, a tractor or a, a car or something like that. At some point, you want to monitor the temperature. So if they hit this limit, you send the message, uh, message to, the, to, to the cloud. So that's the, the, the good part about the, the IoT. So you have this model inside of the, the IoT device and avoid any kind of telemetry and processing all the time, send message to the cloud. Uh, 
Okay, perfect. We have here another question. Uh, yeah. So the question is, is there a vehicle in the video? I can see the vehicle message being sent in the logs. Yeah, exactly. I saw that as well. So what basically have here, because uh, the NVIDIA DP3 SDK, they have a couple of other, uh, let's say, models inside of this SDK, this model NVIDIA. So what's happened here, I, I just found out this is a bug last week. And I sent a message to the NVIDIA developers to take a look at this. But basically, he's just looking at these images. He finds that like a car and using another model inside of this and say, OK, this is a car here. But it's not inside of the custom vision. It's not inside of uh, any kind of my data set today. So for sure, is a, is a bug inside of the NVIDIA DP string. That's the reason, Pedro. All right. Can you just jump uh, quickly back to the to the slide so I can just yeah yeah. So just to let you know, in case you did not have a chance to do it in the beginning of the session, I would like to ask you to register to this session by using this opportunity provided by Microsoft to access relevant materials related to this session. In order to do that, you just you can scan the QR codes or even use the ak.ms uh, link. And you just need to fill in a, a quick short form and you will have access to these materials. And it's also important for us because we can justify all the efforts in relation to this initiative. So please just take a minute and register to this form. Uh, we we have another question here, Vitor. Yeah. So a little bit irrelevant to this topic. What is Victor's opinion about Jets and Nano? I, I think it uh, you get on one of the best device so far. If you want to plan, if you want to implement any kind of machine learning or custom vision uh, on the IoT Edge device, I think it's like it's this is like it, it's it's really something that Nvidia is really taking ahead about this. And it is my professional opinion. If you like to start to work with the custom vision, AI models, machine learning on the IoT device. This is the best you can you can do so far. So it's really cheap. It's ninety nine dollars. You can have this this device. I think I have the box here. So you're gonna receive some box like this size, and and the developer program from NVIDIA it's amazing. You can use a lot of materials for that, and they have full support to connect with Microsoft and Microsoft the Azure. So go for this, and it's amazing. Perfect. I believe we are good to proceed to the next slides, Vitor. Yeah. So you can present your series of sessions. Yeah. So I, I just put here some resources for you. The first one, NVIDIA Gets on Nano Developer Kit, the one that I showed for you. Access the site. It's amazing. The developer, again, the developer program for NVIDIA, it's amazing. They have, they almost good as the Microsoft Docs. They have everything. They have a nice forum. The people were supporting all the time there. So. If you have really interesting you know, on developing deep stream things, uh, at TensorFlow, AI, machine learning uh, with the IoT device, the GPU, go from there. It's amazing. So they again, they have an amazing developer program. And this uh, this this demo, it's available. It's not my demo. It was produced by Microsoft in the Azure samples. You can go there and take a look how the guys are deploying this same model. But instead of using Soda, soda can factory, using the uh, detecting uh, uh, cars using the same device, but instead of just three screens, using eight screens inside of the same individual that's on. Another. So again, you have a showcase there. And you can get started with the Azure IoT Hub and the Azure IoT Edge. It's a really amazing product as well. And Azure IoT Center is not here, but you can do it's all part of the ecosystem of the uh, of the IoT set of the Azure. Okay. Uh, okay. So we are preparing for August an IoT series that will help you to understand more, more about the IoT IoT on Azure uh, and start to develop the solutions and get ready for the AZ uh, two hundred and twenty. That's the Microsoft Education for IoT Developer. Uh, first. We'll have an uh, overview on IoT services. On this session, you'll become familiar with Azure IoT service, what the, the elements to build the development environment, how to connect the device with the Azure IoT hub, 
taking the first steps of like on this journey to becoming an Azure IoT developer. Uh, the second session is connecting IoT device to Azure. On this session, we explore if register the IoT device to, to Azure IoT Hub, how to run a pre-built simulate device and check the telemetry sent by this device. And the third set, session is this setting up the IoT device. So I will enter more details about this at the device and how to connect this. And they're gonna use the IoT device that can monitor the temperature one of the machines and deploy a string analytics model to calculate the average temperature and send the alert to the device at tracked it quickly. So if you want more details on IoT the Edge, is a session that you must connect. And the last session will be create an Azure IoT Central custom app. Uh, a device template and run simulate refrigerated truck with the route selected by Azure Maps using Visual Studio Code and also monitor and command the simulate device from the IoT Central dashboard. Uh, Peter, yeah, just one, the, one thing. Uh, yeah. there, is a uh, there is a typo just for, oh, yeah, for yeah. Now people to, to know. There is a typo on the first date, so it's 7th of August. And the easiest way to memorize the, uh, the dates of these sessions is to be um all friday all fridays in august so every friday it will be iot sessions basically in IoT august. friday <laughs> yeah iot friday exactly <laughs> <laughs> okay i just i just i just fixed here so yeah starting by 7 of august we have this iot sessions and we can do some kind of quiz by the end of each session that we can exercise and 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 to to get comfortable with the questions inside of the exam so You'll be really fine. So, and with that, thank you very much, guys, for having me today and join me today. Uh, if you again, if you have any questions, just reach me, reach me out on social media, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Okay. So, just before we finish the session, I just want to let you know that next week we will have another great session. In this time, with Dwayne Netwick uh, delivering the second session of the Azure Solutions Architect Certification Series. So this session will be related to infrastructure as a service on Azure. So if you are studying or planning to study to this certification, then don't miss this opportunity to attend the session with Duane and learn more about how to be prepared to get this certification. The link of the session is on the chat, so you can register to the session and don't miss it out. And thank you, Victor, for delivering this great session. And thank you, everyone to join and dedicate your time with us on this session. I hope you enjoyed this session and I included in the chat a link for our survey uh, session survey. So we really appreciate your feedback so we can improve our sessions and deliver future sessions related to topics that are useful and of your interest. So have a great day and thank you once again and happy Monday to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Hugo. Thank you, guys. See you next time. Thank you.